Mike McGlinchey's development or bounce back. This is very important. This, they've put a lot of effort and resources into improving the offensive line this offseason. They brought in Alex Mack. They spent a second round pick on a guard. They spent a fifth round pick on a guard. They brought in a six foot nine giant from Mexico to play offensive tackle as well. They brought in all kind of stuff, but they stuck with Mike McGlinchey. And they're saying, a better supporting cast, a better off season, more weight training, more mass will lead to a better season for him. It better because if he plays like he did last year, he kind of ruins everything they're building. He needs to at least be as good as he was in 2019. Well, uh, you know, Mike Golick, I believe he was on the Niners Nation podcast, talked about Mike McGlinchey being in the best shape of his life. So again, you know, it, it's hard to it's hard good. to jump into and take those those sort of quotes and draw anything from them because. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All you ever hear about players is, "Oh, I'm the I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm finally healthy." So, so you know, Kyle that said that about McGlinchy last year, right? So, yeah. So, Mike Golick saying that you know it does give you a little bit of more confidence, but I really believe that the the Aaron Banks thing is going to be really helpful to him. But I, I, you know what? Call it speculating. Call it you know wishing on a dream. But two gold domers next to each other, both of them really you know understanding uh how how to play the the position. So I think that you know it is crucial that Mike McGlinchey gets this done because it is his fifth year option. And if the 49ers don't bring him back, then you know or sign him and and don't wish to sign him, then that is a big signal that you kind of whiffed on that pick. You know when you draft, you somebody don't have any first round picks to replace him. Right, and if you draft somebody that high, yeah, you're not drafting them for a, a five-year rookie deal. You're drafting them because that's a cornerstone of your offensive line. So this is, a, this is for lack of a better term, a put-up or shut-up year for Mike McGlinchey. I think he realizes that, and I think that uh, he it, it's going to be all determined on the field. So that's that's a definite good call because what he does is so vital to the run game because as much as we complain about what he does in the pass game, he is elite in run blocking. That's yes. not even that, that's not even a, a subjective answer. That's an objective answer. He's yes. elite at what he does at run blocking. If he improves even a little in pass protection, then you're talking about hitting on a pick that you – what is it, ninth pick? The ninth pick, the, yeah. You, you now you're getting the value that you wanted from a ninth pick. Yeah, I don't know if they'll ever get ninth pick value from Mike McGlinchey, but as long as he's 310, 315, 320, and not 285, they're good. And it sounds like it looks like you know, it looks like that's what they need from him. They can't, you can't play the position at 285. Sure, you could be a good run blocker in space without with a little less weight on you, but you can't play the position like that, dude. So just a 315 pound Mike McGlinchey for 17 games would be a huge. Uh, addition because the 285 pound version in my opinion not a good football player 310 he's fine he's i mean well, he's, i don't know if he's the ninth pick but he's fine and we talked about and we talked about him talking about his own performance over the offseason right yes. I, I wasn't up to my standard good good good, good. those are those are the things that you want to hear right everything and that sounds good so far right and everything that you you know that we know about you know those pa pass blocking reps when when he when those issues happen, they usually happen in the biggest portion of the game. That's why they're so magnified. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not trying to – Same thing happened to him at Notre Dame. It's kind of been his, his – so, yeah. yeah. I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to deflect away from it. It's just that it's under the microscope because it always happened – it happened on a crucial third down or it happened yeah. on the final drive oh, and, and it put them back. And, you know, so – I think he understands everything. of Of all accounts, he's he's handling things the right way. He's beefed up. He he realizes that he needs to play better. And uh, you know, again, I believe that he he understands that it's a put up or shut up year for himself. So uh, I'm excited to see what his progression will look like this year. Yeah, this could be a good story. <laughs> 